everybody. It's Mel and Janelle here, and we have the most amazing little guest. It's Jack the Bichon, and of course, what a Bichon does is never look at the camera. I know. Ever. <laughs> when he, he knows when it's on, doesn't he? He's like, he can see the red light. He's like, no, not looking at that now. No, I know. Good boy. So this is my favourite breed. I love the Bichon. I do, <laughs> I, love I, do it. I do too, but you're the you're the Bichon Queen, so that's oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hey Dad. Well, you know, like I started out from and poodles mm-hmm. and then um went on to Bichon. So I still love my poodles. Yeah. I think I'll always have poodles and yeah. Bichons as well. Yeah. So I think they go pretty much hand in hand. They do. How's our sound and everything? All good? They're all, all good? good? Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, so who has their Bichons ready? I know that someone posted that their Bichon was ready. Oh, really? Did they? Yeah. Oh, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. That's so cute. So we can do our Bichon head together. Oh, hi, Tam. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> hi, Tam. She's one of our, our main followers, I think. She's on every week. Really? Yep, she That's loves it. Cool. It's awesome. I love it. Okay, so with Dash, I wash Dash probably um, would be a couple of hours ago now. <laughs> he thinks it's night time, it's sleep time. So I washed him a couple of hours ago. I quickly scissored his body because I was away a few weeks ago and when I go away I normally cut my dogs mm. down so he was pretty short yeah that's good that's and a great idea pretty speedy yeah. thinking he was pretty hot with his short little trim yeah. so he didn't have a lot to take off his body but I needed to take a little bit off to then balance when I trim his head his because head sometimes mm. <laughs> trim yeah. their bodies and then they got this big head or you just trim their head and they got this big, big body. body you don't know where how to balance it yeah. out yeah. Like, there's hair going everywhere it's like a grooming salon it's yeah. sticking to me so um let's just get started i think so what did you bath him in oh, now so i bathed him in the purify first so it's just saying to janelle before we started <laughs> Uh, I don't normally bath him in Purify, yeah. but he was ridiculously dirty. He'd have been having a good time. He digs <laughs> holes everywhere. Like, we have this smaller yard for mm. our dogs to play in and things like that, and Dash just digs holes like... I'll like, never forget that time when he got under the decking. Was it under yeah, the decking? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he come the out. Deck and he come out just <laughs> was... brown, like with these little eyes, like it was just brown. And it's just, a great photo. Yeah, that was before a dog show. I, yeah. just, I just shut the door and went back to bed. Yeah. But, so I bathed him in the Purify shampoo first, and mm-hmm. then followed with the Relax shampoo, and then the Relax conditioner. Conditioner, yep. And I've used the Relax coat conditioning spray in his coat as I'm drying him and straightening out his coat as I'm using the stand dryer. The dry. stand dryer, yep. Yeah. So when our salon is built downstairs, I'm actually going to do another video about how we prep mm, yeah. and things like that. Yeah, exactly. And that'll Oof. be really good for competitors as well. So uh, For grooming competitions? Yeah. Yeah. We'll be yeah. able to show you all different breeds on prepping and yeah. getting them ready. Yeah. Definitely. So, Dash, you ready? Are you ready to have your head trimmed? <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's like, no, not really. <laughs> so, I use this slicker first. Uh, this is a Artero Universal. So, I use this to help remove any dead coat mm-hmm. in his hair mm-hmm. uh, just to make sure um, I don't have any flyaways and things like that. And the more healthier the hair is, the easier it is to yep. scissor and the better finish we're going to achieve. Yeah. And then I follow through with a slicker that the pins are closer together. So this just helps separate the coat when we're drying his hair. So you can see how it's separating versus this is just like a workhorse. And then I go back through with our double-sided where is your salon located? We are getting a little training centre <laughs> built at the moment. And because of COVID, everything's taken so long. So hopefully we can Hopefully next soon. It's, month. it's, yeah, it's coming along. Yeah. Hopefully. And it's in Raven Hall, so in Melbourne. Yeah, in <laughs> Melbourne. Then I'm using a fine tooth comb. So this is once I've used my slickers and I've removed all the knots and tangles, 
then I use my fine tooth comb. So, ready, Dash? Come on, buddy. Up your pops. You got to close up now, buddy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okie dokie. So, I'll just go through how we are going to balance his head first. And this is how I trim Dash's head today is how I trim most, Did every time, yeah. most pigeons? Yeah. yeah. I would say I try and follow the same rules so I don't forget anything. Yeah. And then I can go back and revisit an area if something's not working out. Yeah, you try to keep the same routine. If so one that... of their ears is flicking. Yeah. That yeah, that's, it always and, happens, doesn't it? And I know this is going to be a question that people are going to ask is about the ears and how to hide the ears because that is a, one of the features about a Bichon is that their ears are nice and hidden. Mm -hmm. And we'll be able to show you that. Yeah. Dash has nice little hidden ears. Yeah, except for this one. This one sometimes just flicks out a little bit. Which is a little bit annoying. That's really nice. Debbie's just said that she loves the product and loves supporting the Australian product. Oh, Love the fact that the product lathers well and washes out e easily too. Yeah, thank That's you. good. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we can go to our We're going to have, up. do you want to talk about a couple of the die, di what do we got? Yeah. My front lounge room. Oh, hey, Zach. <laughs> Zach. <laughs> When Zach's going to come in and visit us I know. Day. We'll do a yeah, little interview with yeah. him. I've got lots of keen questions for him. So we'll just go up to our close-up camera if we can. Camera one. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Okie dokie. So a few things before we begin trimming our Bichon's head. So instead of just grabbing our scissors and just starting to try and scissor a round head, which is usually as grim as what we yeah. normally do, is panic and go, oh my god, I've got it to needs to be this round. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so a Bichon's appearance should be round, soft, and happy and pleasant. So this is their general appearance and how we want to create create his head. So we can see his little eyes, but <laughs> this is what he does when I film with him. He closes his eyes. I'm like, oh, no. He has the most beautiful dark eyes too, and he's yeah. just like, oh, God. So I'm pretty lucky with Dash. He has the most amazing pigment, which really helps when we're trying to create a beautiful Bichon expression. So we have their little eyes here, and then we have their nose and their little lips. So we can see that this forms a triangle. And what we would like to do is keep that triangle either directly in the centre of his head or we prefer it down further than up higher. Mm. So if just say we move the triangle and take half More of, of that his off. head off, mm -hmm. we then don't get that roundness. We get the shape of like a football the, yeah. type. The, what is it, Family Guy? Yeah, Dewey. the baby yeah. of Family Guy. Yeah. See? <laughs> see what happens? We used to see it a lot. <laughs> yeah, so what we want to do is keep this head nice and full. And then when we can see around towards his neck, this is called their crest. Oops, up your pop, buddy. And then the top of the head the top of our skull then goes around into our neck area. So it is really important that we keep this coat on top. Is that all right, Betty? Because <laughs> that helps with the carriage too, doesn't it, Mel? It does. Yep. Definitely. And if we can put up some, I have some little uh, yes, diagrams. diagrams. And we'll go to the next one. So I might put these up on our website as well within the next week. Yep. So this one is our side profile. So if we can see our front profile, I always like to have our front profile round and then as well as our Just move side in. profile. Yep, that's it. Perfect. And then our side profile is round coming from our nose. Just a little bit more back. 
That's nose, it. Nose towards our ear, and you can see he's missing a little bit of coat because I cut him off nice and short. <laughs> so we are growing it back, but we can see how it's nice and round coming in behind his ear, and then comes up to the top of his skull again. And that's our roundness from our side. And then we can visualize our roundness from the front. And then if we, if we pop go to the next, nose down, next, next one. slide yep. is our top profile. So roundness again from the top. So when we're trimming, I always like to check our top profile as well. Um, and if we can have a look at this diagram here, it is really important to keep those portions in check as well. And that also helps with the back of the crest as well. So um, five parts, three parts mm. with the muzzle. Mm. I because, find that really useful yeah, when I'm doing it. Yeah, if we take this back, all of a sudden it's probably four parts, three parts, mm. and then we've got no crest. So when we're doing our Bichon head, it's really important to keep the crest in mind as we're trimming. It'll come out a little bit, I think. And with this as well, if we do, and I spoke about this the other day, the other day, last week, yeah. about Miley, the poodle, yeah. and she, because she's a poodle, she has a, long, a longer snout. Yeah. So Muzzle. with our Bichons, we really like to keep this coat here on the the nose. top of the muzzle yeah the yep. top of the muzzle our nose area to help create that fullness and create that roundness as it's coming into the side of our dog's head so our cheek area all righty should we get started dashley he's got his eyes closed ready to go <laughs> so again i will pop pop these charts on our website I think we could probably do that this week. Yeah, we'll get that done this week so that's easier for people to, to, download. to download. And they got little tips on them as well. Okay, so I'm going to begin by clipping out his eye area. Uh, Dash, like I said, has the most amazing... You can probably go in a little bit if you yeah. want, Jay. Has the most amazing yeah. pigment. So I don't really need to take a lot out because I can see his pigment through his coat. And what blade do you usually use? I usually use a 30 or mm -hmm. a 40. Mm -hmm. But if your dog is a little bit more sensitive or you do have a groom, you're grooming a dog that... Like a pet at home. Yeah. That, yeah, yeah. that um, isn't used to that short blade, definitely... Uh, use a longer blade mm -hmm. or use your thinners. Yeah, okay, that's a good point. And Christy good. from Sydney said hello from Sydney. Oh, <laughs> hi, Sydney. Sarah, Sarah Jane, Jane. Oh. from the UK. Oh, sad. Yeah. No, it's not sad, but <laughs> sad about the Queen. <laughs> Very sad about the Queen. Okie dokie. Hi, Ali. Oh, hi, Ali. <laughs> Beautiful Ali. Okie dokie. So we are going to come in and I like to go scoop up and I also like to come in and scoop down and I just like to take out the hair in the in front of the inner corner of Their his eyes. eyes. Yes, he's a very chill, chill dog. dog. He is. Yeah. <laughs> He'll probably be asleep in about 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He'll be asleep, but then I'll put put him on the floor and move him around like a lunatic. <laughs> okay, so I'm just using the corner of my clipper and my blade. So I'll never use uh, the middle of the blade. I'll always manoeuvre my blade. Depending on which corner, which, which eye you're doing, yeah. yeah. And I like to just use the corners for more intricate type precision clipping. So I'm coming up towards his eye and I'm just scooping that out. Just working on the bottom part of yep. the eye. The bottom part and then his other eye coming up. And then I like to come in 
and go the opposite way just to make sure I've got those little hairs. And you can see how that just opens up his eyes. Look, he's awake now. <laughs> <laughs> because we should have a nice uh, round eye, although he's asleep. And then I like to come in with my thinners. Oh, Shayla said, miss you all, including Cheeky Dash. We miss you too, yeah, Shayla. You although you got nice sunny weather and we're yeah. still <laughs> raining down here. Yeah. <laughs> come in with my thinners going towards his skull and going with the direction of oh Romania Hello. wow um going, direction with the hair yeah going with the direction of the coat because I just want to blend in where I've clipped on each little eye so we get that nice soft appearance and I'm just using the tips of my blenders, my thinner, sorry. Crystal says you're amazing. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Is she talking to me? I'm Jeffrey. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Tina. Tina's joining us again. Oh, Tina. I love seeing the ones that come back. Yeah. Thank you, Tina. Our oh, Clute says hi. Oh. Oh, oh Clutie. Clutie. <laughs> that's Dash's dad. Mm. Mm. <laughs> so that's probably as much as I do in his stop area. We can do a little bit more if you wanted to. But I like to just keep it nice and simple. We can also clip out the rims. Of the eye? Of the eye. Yeah. I generally don't with him because I... You can see his... The you can see his pigment, pigment through. coming through. Yeah. Uh, and I feel like that it's there to see and you don't really need to. But if you are going to do that, again, just using the corner of your clipper, your blade. From and Northern Ireland as well. Coming along and then just taking off those little lashes. You can see the difference. So now I have to do that. Yeah. <laughs> That's very intricate work, that one. Yeah. And it just opens it up a little bit. I love watching Dash. We watch Dash all day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So once I've clipped out his eyes, I am then going to use my fine tooth comb and comb everything out. And it's really important that when you are combing out that you are really being honest with your combing. So making sure you pull out all that hair on the cheek. Especially like, well, not just, ear. yeah in front of the ear because when we look at all that stuff yeah. <laughs> when we um because when we're growing out our bichon's heads and you might have some dogs that you are growing out at the moment hey tara um it's really important to the hair that's in front of that ear needs to be nice and full so all this that you would normally scissor off, mm -hmm. don't scissor it. I yeah. know with all your power and all your will, don't scissor it. I know, it. exactly. Because <laughs> as soon as you out. do, as soon as you do, that's when your ears are going to pop out. Yeah, out they're going to pop it? out straight away, yeah. I'm pretty lucky with Dash. He has the most amazing little head. I really like it and I really enjoy grooming it. <laughs> and his coat is really thick, as you can see. As you can see. <laughs> <laughs> okie dokie so for the people that joined last week you'll hear the same thing as mm -hmm. I'm about to say is that when I'm grooming I'm always grooming from the front profile or the side profile I'm forever walking around my dog to make sure I've got roundness at the front the side above and 
that softness yeah. because what can actually happen is when we're trimming our bichon head and we're only trimming the front to get that nice round appearance, all of a sudden we might have cut off too much of this area and we're not watching what's going on with this ear. Right, and then yeah. all of a sudden our ears will start to poke, poke up. up. Mm -hmm. Okie dokie. I don't know what Dash is doing. I swear, like, my God, she's good on this table and just go, all right, well, it's nice Hello. Now. now we'll sleep. Yeah. Oh, hi, Coco and Pixie. Coco and Pixie. Beautiful. Deb, okay. Deb, hi, guys. Hello. Hi, Deb, Deb. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to begin by trimming his fringe. And what I'm doing is really trying to separate his coat. So I'm just going to trim probably about one third of his head to start with and then build into it. Mm -hmm. If you do have a dog that doesn't already have any shape in or you're trying to build shape, even start smaller. So comb all that back and then start really tiny. Hi, Matt. His back is another. Oh, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> and then joins us. Yeah, so just start small. And using my curves, and I always scissor on that 45 degree angle, so from the side, so our 45 from our nose. It's about 45. Yeah, that's about right. Yep. There, that's the angle that I'm going to scissor my fringe on because we really would like this fringe to really frame our eyes and give the best expression that we possibly can because if we all of a sudden don't brush this mm -hmm. forward um if this is all brushed back and we start scissoring i can't get a true reading of how much coat is there and how i'm going to frame the eye yeah. correctly and i think i follow this rule with a lot of my dogs yeah yeah, same. A lot of the salon dogs that come in, because as we said, you'll see if you re, if you jump on and watch the teddy trim, it's the same, same kind of yeah. idea. So we kind of do that with our teddy heads and as it really well. Really gives a nice expression. Okay, so I'm going to pop my scissors on that 45 degree angle, and I'm only going to scissor with the um, first third. Yeah, first third, and coming on that 45 degree angle and I'm going around towards the outer corner of his eye. You're not going past the eye. No, oh, yeah. just to that outer corner yeah. through there. And then our other side, which this side's going to be a bit awkward, so I'm going to have to keep walking. Around. That's good, they can see that. And then comb a little bit more in. So this is how we're building our... The top of the head. Yeah. A little bit more. And I always start from where I first scissored, even though I might not take any hair off or it might be really mm. minimal amount of hair. And then... Hi, Alicia. It says Ali, but it's Alicia. Oh. <laughs> my gosh. Getting head to my job. And Thank you for doing these demos, Benjamin just said. Oh. You're welcome. Yeah, you're very welcome. I miss seeing everyone. I know. Like, I really miss it. You just the names from, like, I know. You see people, like, all the time. Yeah, and then all of a sudden. I think These are people that we've known for, like, years, time. 20 years, <laughs> some of them. Come on, don't be silly. <laughs> We're not that old. <laughs> so then I've taken more coat in. Again, Dash, keep still going. And then building that up and around. And I'm trying to visualize that roundness. And you can see on that side profile, 
that is coming up and over mm. the top of his head. What are you visualizing? The roundness going over to the top, yes? Yep. Yep. Through yep. Yep. And the, the profile. Side profile. Yep. And it's really important because we're only taking small amounts of coat off that you constantly comb out all those little hairs because they just seem to build up in mm -hmm. the coat and cause little knots, knots. and tangles. Mm -hmm. I'm very wiggly today. <laughs> Hello from Milo. Oh, hi Milo. I love seeing people's photos with their visual. I know, they all their little profile pics of their visual. And then pull more hair in and then just see how that sits. So I'm pretty happy with that at the moment. What scissors are you using at the moment, Mal? I'm using PNW Blacksmith Curves. They're a 7.5 Blacksmith. Hmm. From they're DGS. beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> they've got a serrated edge, so they, they're really great for um, shaping. And, yeah, and catching all that hair. And if you're really particular, you can keep combing this so you get that nice... Um, Nice line through that eye area. But I'm pretty happy with that. But I'm not happy with the little stop, stop. area. No. <laughs> Sometimes, as soon as you cut their little fringe, you can see more. Hairs. Yeah. I'm pretty happy with that. See how that just frames his little eyes and begins to open them up. And Dash is a type of dog. He doesn't have a lot of hair. He never grows a lot here. And I think it is because he rubs his coat and rubs his head a lot. Little tangles because <laughs> those little hairs that fly around. Okay. Yeah, at the moment it looks like it's snowing all dash hair everywhere. You might just have yeah. to keep your hair there. Oh, yeah. Only Janelle. I know, it's just me. <laughs> He's like, it's not 3 30 in the afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> 3.30 is cuddle time. Okay, so I always like to hold my dog's heads just gently on their mouth with my thumb and then my fingers near. Like over the top of his yeah, muzzle? Yeah, around their stop area. Yeah. Just so it keeps everything, like my hands aren't disrupting the trim. Helen just tuned in. Oh, hi, Helen. Good timing. <laughs> okay. So always, this was a big thing for me. I always forgot to trim mm. underneath, underneath, like around that jawline. It was where they always, checked. the judges always check too. <laughs> Okie dokie. So, so I'm going to use my curves and then I'm using... Um, the curve just to put in a little bit of shape and remembering our little triangle that I either want it further down the head or smack bang in the middle. So with dash, I prefer it further, further down, down and more not heaps of hair on his chin. I just feel like he can't carry it. Mm -hmm. He's only a little dog. Yeah. So, um, just so give him more. a bit more yeah. carriage and... Yeah. Make him look tall. Yeah. He needs, <laughs> he needs, <laughs> he needs to look tall. Yeah. <laughs> so I like to sort of come in underneath as well and look as I'm scissoring around. So coming in and starting at his jaw, coming up and around. And I always scissor and make lots of noises and <laughs> whistle. And, because what we need to do is make sure there is a Moving. place forward mm -hmm. and we're not going to get that triangle that happens to yeah. me all the time. We're coming up. He's moving his little legs. And 
scissoring up towards the top of his ear and I don't keep scissoring the top of the skull yet. I just would like to make sure I've got everything in place so far on the side of his head. <laughs> he doesn't normally move this much. <laughs> I felt like last week Miley was moving too. Yeah. I think they would just know when it's their time. <laughs> yeah. So I'm pretty happy with that shape. He seems pretty happy with that as well. So I'm going to move over to the other side. But what we need to be careful of is that we do exactly the same length on this side as we've done with mm. that side because sometimes all of a sudden I can take more off this side. I don't know what happens. Is it more <laughs> off one side than the other? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I'm the same. I don't know if it's a way I'm moving my head or... Tilting your head around. Yeah. Good boy. Sure Looks like he's fallen down. asleep. And yeah. He's always sleeping until yeah. he's down on. Yeah, down on the floor. So again, starting at his jaw area. That's a good angle. And then coming up around to his cheek. And remember, this is just his front profile. We haven't done the side profile yet. He needs to stop moving very carefully. Yeah, Danielle's though. just said, Danielle Nichols she's just said, Mel, remember the golden rule, never work with children and, uh, or animals. I know. They know when the camera is on and people are watching. Man, I feel like this is my child <laughs> yeah. and my dog. <laughs> okay. You're right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's all right. Okay, so once I'm happy with that front profile, I'm then going to move to his side profile. And comb everything up. And I always like to comb right down his crest as well. And then starting from his mouth area and even if I don't cut anything here I still like to follow that through with my scissor so sometimes I might not even cut any hair here but I'm still following it through so my so action you're getting is that round. circle yeah. yeah I wonder if the mat's too comfortable mm, I know <laughs> sometimes I think maybe we make it too comfortable for it okie dokie so coming around the front of his muzzle and scissoring around. And I'm not scissoring anything here because I took to like I mm -hmm. took a heap of hair off when I went away. And then coming up around his ear and then up towards his the back of his skull, so towards his occiput. Mm-hmm. And I can scissor a little bit of crest in as well as I'm doing this. Good boy, buddy. So we can start to see that roundness come through. And then I'm just going to use my blenders because as I'm doing this, I always need to keep watch of what's happening at the front of his head as well. So even though I'm looking at the side. You're keeping in mind what's yeah, going on at the front. What's happening at yeah. the front as well because I don't want to take off too much that's going to yeah, don't ruin this profile. Yeah, don't fixate on one, one area. area. And always try and flow everything in mm -hmm. with your dog. So if we're grooming the head, then we're grooming the whole, whole head, head yeah. from every single angle. And yeah. especially if you're showing a dog, like the judge might be all competing. The judge might be looking from this way or they might be looking from Front this on. way, mm -hmm. that way. Uh, so, so many different angles. So we want to make sure that they're all covered. And just gently again. And I like to probably leave, like this is his ear. So we can just see how much hair is actually, if he'll show you. Yeah. Go and show, don't show me. 
don't you know he is? <laughs> so this is his ear. So that is quite a lot of hair that's been left around. Mm. If anyone was interested, because sometimes it's interesting. It is interesting to see how much hair is there. That is a scary part to do. Like Alicia's just said, that's a scary part to do. It's not scary. Let's not say it's scary, but once if you're not concentrating on, on as we said, the whole head yeah. and you go look at the front, then yeah. you're like, oh, I've taken yeah. off too much. Or, But you can feel as well. Yeah. So if you don't want to go any further than, say, this part, just take a little bit off and that's your little marker. So then you know that's a tip mm-hmm. of the ear. Of the ear, yep. Sometimes I do that with dogs I'm doing a smaller head on I'll just quickly take see the, where tip. the tip is yeah cut that and then use that as a guideline yeah, so then I can just carry on yeah with the head and then if we look at the front we can see we're still getting that nice roundness through there I don't know why I always like to use my blenders through ears do you? Through the back of the ear area. What do you do? I do use blenders quite a bit on the Bichon head because I'm not as confident, I don't think. <laughs> but to be honest, like Bichon head is actually probably one of my favourite things to trim as well. Yeah, sometimes I get through the body and then mm. I'm like, oh, <laughs> Because the head is You're the like, most oh, stressful you, part. You've got to do the head yeah. now. <laughs> so even I think that and I, yeah, like, I have You do it a lot. Yeah. But it is rewarding when you pop them down. Oh, the floor and they're and just beautiful. I know, gorgeous. Yeah. Just scary when they move. It, as Mel said, just keep making some noises, make sure that their ears are moving and you can see yeah. what's going on there. It is very cute that he's slowly moving his <laughs> legs backwards. <laughs> so we can see that roundness starting to appear through Right from the nose, all the way yeah, around. Right from that nose area. Now remember, like I said earlier, he's a smaller dog, so I can get away with taking that little bit more off his head as well. Yeah, yeah. Let's look at your other side now, little boy. And coming from the front around and remembering I took him nice and short last time so need to grow this out a little bit so pretend it's there and then come up the back of the ear what do those I think chunkers do the leelas leela leela um Mm. what do the chunkers do with the holes in them oh in the scissor I think in the actual blade yeah she's wondering why it has the hole I think that's what she's asking. So it's I like them for shaping and um, for curves, like say his back leg. Good boy. Through his boy. little bum. That they give a really nice shape if we're trying to blend something into itself do you know why they have the holes now in the blenders it just and the chunkers yeah so we've got these are really sharp <laughs> <laughs> so we've got these the holes the spaces are a little bit bigger and then so they take out more hair and then these blenders the spaces are smaller so of course they take out less hair and then we go right down to, to your a thinner. thinner and they're sharp as well. Yeah, careful. <laughs> <laughs> okay, little boy. What side are we doing? This, this side. side. Oh, yeah, this side. That side. <laughs> Different on the camera. Yeah. <laughs> And they're great for curly coats. Mm. I find they blend. They, they're a little bit more, what's the word? Um, softer. Yeah. Softer appearance. Yeah. Yeah. 
a little bit more forgiving as well. They are more forgiving. <laughs> so because I'm trying to create shape in here, I can do it with curves. Yeah, with my curves. But I just prefer. I really just prefer the finish that the chunkers get. But if you're learning and you're, and you're giving it a go, maybe try it with your chunkers or your blenders and that can help. Yeah. So this is his ear and that always flicks out. So mm. this is his troubled ear that, <laughs> like, I have a lot of troubles with, but thank God, like, his lead's always here. Yeah. <laughs> So I know that with his this ear, because I've done his head so many times, I know how I need to take it a little bit shorter mm. here because it kind of... It flicks up, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, we all have those one visions that... Yeah, you'll get to know which one's yeah. ear sits <laughs> which way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, then we're back to our... Front profile. If you've got any questions or anything, guys, just make sure you pop them in the chat or um, comment. Yeah. We'll be able to answer them for you. And then just using my blenders around the front of his head because I'm pretty much happy with that side. I'm just going to work on the front. And I also like to pop my hand just behind his ear through here. So my hand, my thumb and my index, index. finger, they just come behind on top of his neck, sort of around his Aussie foot. Mm -hmm. And I just move his ears forward a little bit. So this just helps for when they get that nice attention and their ears pop up. Yeah. Which I always want my dogs to be all excited Al and things. Alert and yeah. attentive. Yeah. <clears throat> so I have so idea. many questions, Amy Jones. I have so many questions, so out of my area, LOL. It's oh. not out of your area, you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. And it can take a little bit of practice for mm. dogs to get used to. You're holding them like that? Yeah. Yeah. Which sometimes he tolerates and then sometimes he's like, no, nah, no. Nah, he's nah. like, oh, there's something behind my ears. <laughs> yeah, but he's pretty sleepy at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> so when the ears are like this, this is when I can then really shape this head and I'm going from my side profile. Let's make sure my shoulders get knees a little bit. He's such a good little boy. He's probably my most well-behaved dog. Oh, he's so, so clever. Trey's, and silly. Yeah, Trey's well, it's not that. Yeah. He's mini -poo. Oh, we need a camera everywhere so we can see that little bit under there. Yeah, <laughs> so we can see that here. So as, like, I've scissored him, like, I've scissored up to his jawline, so what this actually does is when I'm creating that roundness, um, it sort of overhangs mm -hmm. and gives that nice round appearance. And that's a good angle to show the roundness mm. through there. But sometimes you don't need to take off much at all. It's only just small amounts. And I'll mostly work on the bottom half before I so is even, that the last thing that you yeah, do? Yeah, the crest I is need the last. It to, even if I've clipped off a dog on another mm -hmm. three blade, mm -hmm. but I've still kept the Left bit of crest, crest I yep. still do that last to then blend it in in proportion with how much coat the dog actually has to balance out the trim. Yeah. So Kelly's no, that was good. Kelly's just asked, um, do you clip around the front of the mouth at all? Okay, so I personally don't, mm. but a lot of people do. And the reason I don't is because he already has the most amazing pigment and I don't need to show it off. You can see his pigment and you can see um, his, black his lip, lip. lip area. It comes through the hair with him. Yeah. Some people might prefer to do it. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. Yeah. I like his little lips. 
favourite. Have you uh, told the others at home yet? Oh, they know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> I think Dash tells everyone at home. <laughs> anyway, Dash holds no secret. Yeah. <laughs> so we can see that nice roundness coming through. I miss the beginning. Can you please? Oh, that where the throat is. We didn't actually do oh, the throat no. on the video. So I'll just try and move his head all up. So I scissor right up to the it's kind of like line. When you feel under it, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, buddy. Thanks for telling me. <laughs> um, so I scissor up to that jawline through here. So when that, when his head, when his head is, when the hair is down, it kind of falls over that jawline to, so I've got room to create mm. that round head through there. Does that help, Helen? What am I talking about, Helen? The groom that you did on... It was gorgeous. Was that Justin? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was beautiful. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was. Cavoodles of Sydney. Hello from Sydney. Hello. Hello, Cavoodles of Sydney. <laughs> yeah, so we can see the roundness coming through, which is really nice. Because he hasn't had a round head for a while. <laughs> <laughs> and then this is where once I'm happy with how everything is placed in this bottom half. This is where I start to then look at the top of his skull into, I love the sound. Serrated, serrated yeah, scissors. serrated scissors are the best. I then start to look at what's happening through the top of his head and then into his neck area. Hello from Ireland. All the way from Ireland. Oh. Okay, round dash. So as we come around, I don't like to use my blenders. So this will be mm -hmm. the one I think Layla yeah. asked. I don't like to use my blenders on the top of the head because I want it to be a really sharper sharper edge um, and more precise. So Kelly um, Kelly just said this is her first time viewing. Do you do the lives often? We do. Same time, same time every week. Every week. <laughs> <laughs> Unless something happens, but yeah. no, usually <laughs> we will and we'll share it before on social medias. Um, if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you'll get um, notifications, notifications yeah. come up. So as I'm coming up the top of his skull, I like to do this from the front profile and I only take off the smallest amount of hair. So it's only like just tipping the top mm -hmm. on the front profile yep. because if I take too much off, it might be lower than the crest. Yeah, and you don't want it lower than I the crest. I don't want it lower than the crest. Mm -hmm. So make sure we comb everything up. Zach, under the chin is so important. Gone are the days of flat, straight chins, <laughs> mushroom heads around. <laughs> it's, 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 I know, I remember seeing Bell them. Heads. We're just like, oh, God. The sun fishons look nice in a bell head. Do you like it? Yeah. Um, the sunny ants. Oh, yeah, that's in true. She's in a bell head. Yeah. She does have a lovely head. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to tip the top of his head. And it's just to sort of thicken up the coat. Because mm, you're taking that finer. Yeah, it's really, really fine. But I also want to balance it in with what's happening at the bottom mm -hmm. as well. So it is all about balancing. And when we're trimming one area, I'm also looking at the other areas that have been just trimmed. To make sure that your proportions are yeah. correct. Kelly saying she'll watch weekly. Awesome oh, tutorials. Thanks so much. You're welcome. So coming around, and you can use straights. If you prefer to use straights, use straights. I'm just having a curve. She, you are having a curve at the moment, aren't you? I just really like these scissors. They're amazing. <laughs> um, 
Georgina's just asked, do you use product in the head hair um, to give it volume or is it just shampooed? Sometimes I'll use a mousse, um, but not really. Um, with Dash, I didn't. So That's just shampooed and cleaned. Yeah. And, so and... it just depends on some dogs as they get older, they can lose mm. a little bit of volume or you might have a younger dog that you need to put a bit of mousse in. Mm-hmm. You might put some texturizing crystals in there. But he has quite he's volume. Pretty good. Yeah, he has good volume. He is losing a little bit because he rubs his head, but he kind of pushes me around. Mm, he that, does, doesn't he? <laughs> like as I'm trimming his head. So again, our other side. So coming up, and I'm just chipping, so not taking much off at all. And remember, we want the same amount of hair on this side as this side there to there. So if you have trouble, and I always have trouble determining where mm-hmm. lengths are, mm-hmm. just use your comb quickly and mark it. There, yeah. There, there, mm. there, there. It's a good trick to use. Yeah. It's good for when you're competing or showing your dog. Oh. So he's looking pretty cute. He is looking pretty cute. So you don't need to take off a lot. Like people think that like you need to take off this massive amount of coat with your Bichon heads, but you actually don't. Mm. There's not much to take off at all. And you really do start from that ear when you're doing across the yeah across the top of there. And all those little bits of hair tend to go back in the coat. Yeah. And it feels like you've got knots when you actually don't have knots. So always brush it out. Okie dokie. So I'm happy with that shape so far. That's life changing tip with the comb. Oh, <laughs> sometimes you feel like when people give you tips that you're just like, oh my yeah. god. Yeah, it's like, oh my god, why have I not thought of that before? Yeah. It's been something that we've used for years now. Yeah, exactly. Great tip with the comb for the length. Helen thought as well. Good boy. Okay, so when we start to look at the side profile this is a good idea can i stay there so you can hold him trying to get the apron out of the way that's it that's good so we can see what we need to do and what we need to take off so again just coming at the front coming around the back of that ear and i don't want to take off anything in front that cheek yeah. area because that's what's giving us our fullness and it actually allows that ear to rest on something to help hide those ears mm. tracy just said hello from melbourne that's hello, good we're tracy. right here in the cold with you yeah, it's been raining a lot. <laughs> um my customers love the results of your products oh that's good and come in from the bottom as well and just constantly check through there, see how it just neatens mm. it up. Yep, you got rid of that little bit, but yeah. And then you use your comb again and pull it back out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can use your curves if you wanted to. So then we get that nice roundness coming in. So let's look at our crest and the back of our Aussie port mm-hmm. into, into our the... looker. So we can either do this sort of two ways. Um, we can either pop his head back and scissor from the middle of his skull straight down into his wither, which is great for pets, mm-hmm. and I love doing that on pets. Mm-hmm. But with Dash, I don't normally like to because I like to – keep the amount of crest on him to determine how, how much he's on, on his, his back, back. Yeah. and yep. how much he's on his rib cage yep. and how much he's on his wither. Well, hey, oh, Rich. No, Rich, I'm dying. <laughs> I can't wait to see you. I'm um, definitely yeah. going to give you the biggest cuddle. I'll probably squish her because you're so tiny now. 
<laughs> we can hear us talking in the background. <laughs> okay, so. So, yeah, for the pets, you'd bring it right back and scissor it yeah, so down. I would just pop his head back onto himself and then I would just come from the top of his head and then just come straight down. And I don't want to take too much off because I'd like no, to no. be rubbing the whole <laughs> no. press. And then that does give you a nice shape and you can see the shape that sort of happens. See our heads are breathing them up yeah. like. <laughs> but with Dash, I really prefer um, to have more hair here and at, at sort of right behind his ossicle. Yeah. The very top of his, the back of his neck. Yeah, so I just come around and just round this into where we've scissored into that ear. So we're still following that roundness. He's just popped his head into my hand and going to sleep. <laughs> Rich, uh, I like a <laughs> inside joke. He, he says that now. Yeah. <laughs> So it kind of separates the head from the neck, but mm -hmm. doesn't really yeah. as well. Gives you a slight separation. Yeah, but we also need to be careful when we are taking off from our the head top. that we're not ruining this front profile. So this is why I always say look at the side, look at the front, and look at every single angle. And all those little hairs. And then once I'm happy with my shape, I'll then use my coat conditioning spray. You can, I feel like you could scissor a Bichon head forever. I know. <laughs> Although he's looking He's Amazing. looking pretty sharp. He just needs to be more sprightly. Yeah. <laughs> Wake up, Dash. Open your eyes. So I'd like to give a nice spritz, a whisper of coat conditioning spray, and pull everything out, and then cross-check my work. Those little hairs getting stuck in there. Little hairs. And then using my curves... I'll just tighten everything up and just tip off um, any little bits of hair. So that just gives that nice plush finish. And one thing I did forget to tell you guys as well, if you are wanting, if you've got like a bichon that has way too much hair on top, sometimes brushing it over mm. to one side can help. So one side and then scissoring. I can answer moving. this question for you, but it's like what brand of scissors do you use? The P and W's are probably Yeah, they're my go to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> P and W from DGS. DGS. And then comb on the other side. So it's like a side comb. <laughs> a comb over. Comb over. And then And that works really well if you've got a dog with a lot of hair. Taking off some of that yeah, bulkness. That bulk. Good boy. So was there any other questions on our Bichon head? Do you have... A fave finishing comb? Um, this one is an Artero comb. Yeah. That's sort of, I think. That uh, is the finishing comb, the Artero yeah. finishing comb. I quite like that. Yeah, it's a nice comb. He's like ready to go to sleep. He's about like, to I've do his the, turn. The, <laughs> yeah. the word finish. 
So if you want to get more of that plushness, just keep pulling out little hairs. And taking a little bit off at a time. Give a little bit of a spritz and then just taking small amounts off. And I do like to, so if you are showing a dog, I do like to rewash my dog mm -hmm. and then re-look at the head as well. Like I'll never, ever trim a dog and then... Straight into it and then straight into the show. Yeah, I'll always rebath and mm -hmm. have a look. It's looking nice and round there, Dash. I'll just show you that side profile. Yeah, so if you could imagine if there was hair filling in that little <laughs> that little front bit, that'd be a, 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 a full circle. Yeah. The spray we're using is the Relax, Relax coat. coat Conditioning Spray. It's just a conditioning spray. I always have trouble with the hair on the corner of the eyes when it falls forward falls on the forward. back corner, I think she means. Yeah. The back there. corner of the eye, yeah, maybe. You might just need to go a little bit shorter, Kaz. Just come in a little bit more in that corner. Just wrap it around. And the only way you are going to fix your mistakes is just having a go and just constantly doing it so Sorry. the top of the muzzle i meant um what was i can't what remember was your, did Deer you clip ah oh, oh, we got <laughs> that was around the wrong way that's all right so do you clip anything off the top of the nose which is mean top of the muzzle do you mean the stock no, area no she's actually meaning down the foreface oh down here no yeah. no so the only area that we are scissoring or clipping is our stock area which is the part right between the eyes. The inner corners of our eyes. When you say rewash Mel, how close to the show do you do this? That night. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I'll prep like during the week, rewash. Uh, um, rewash trim. trim. And then I'll rewash. So Sunny this week, yeah. I'll be doing her, I think, twice mm -hmm. to get her ready Rebarth. for the big royal yeah. it just helps on show day that you're not running around trimming, trimming. off coat you're mm -hmm. just getting that nice plushness and perfecting and yeah do you trim anything at the show yeah yeah, yeah. but i'm not trimming the shape in because the shape's already there i'm just making sure everything's um neat and tidy yeah, Kaz, I reckon you just need to just comb it out a bit more and then use your curves and just wrap it around a little bit further to the outer corner of the eye. Mm. Mm. You don't want to expose the eye so, like, it, I know people get really concerned if you can't see the eye so much from the side profile. How do you yeah, feel about it? I don't have a problem with it. That I side and I've had people say that to me, but I can't see the eye from the side. And I'm like, Paul, oh, it's not a terrier. <laughs> <I know. laughs> like, what yeah. <laughs> we would just want to, if you, if it, if you need to keep that hair there to create the round shape from the profile and from the front, I would keep the hair there. Yeah. Would because, you too? Yeah. 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 yeah definitely. And so because you, sometimes yeah. if you take off too much to wrap that around, then. You're exposing um, the ear yeah, and you use the round on. shape. So, so you do the whole dog twice and then put the finish on at the show. Yeah. Yes. yes. He would know more than me, but, but yes. <laughs> yeah, that's what I do. Really. So, okay, car got it. Yep. Cool. Would you ever trim the hair just below the nose? Oh, yeah, we had this question just before. Um, I No, not me personally. And I've, I think I've only done it a few times. Yeah, I know. And I don't really – I'm not really a fan of it. And the only reason you really do that is to expose our um, the pigment. Black. 
um, which you can see Dash has the most amazing pigment. So, but if you are going to do that, make a little hole and then just I trim I'm from the, the middle. Yeah, 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 yeah. He doesn't like it. He's like, <laughs> leave my beard, leave my moustache, I'm a boy. Yeah, okay, cool. So did we have any other questions about our little Bichon head? Because I could just keep saying <laughs> that tiny bit. There. Did we learn stuff, guys? Hopefully I'm thinking everyone learned something. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. You're very welcome. <laughs> Okay, so next week, Janelle will be doing the live. Nice and solo, well, kind of solo. <laughs> yeah. I will be doing the live. So we're going to be working on um, a little salon dog, just in a salon trim, uh, like a shorter body with a longer leg um, with a nice little salon head. So yeah. you'll go through. With using um, snap-on attachment. And how to achieve nice straight legs what snap-ons to use yep. with and how to balance out the head with the hair with the body haircut how to blend the longer leg into the shorter body using snap-on combs scissors um straights curves and i'm um, i jump from all different scissors just like you Do you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> straight curves and blenders i'll, I'll be watching from brussels <laughs> <laughs> so i'll be at the whole world grooming yeah you're a couple of hours behind a few hours yeah. behind you'll be fine yeah she'll join us she'll be making comments <laughs> as yeah. we go through i'll be asking questions <laughs> okay so oh you're very welcome tara so i hope you guys enjoyed today's grooming session mm. i enjoyed yeah. it, it that was my fun dog got a <laughs> so and i hope that really helped everybody out on how to achieve a balanced look so don't take too much off in mm -hmm. the cheek area mm -hmm. make sure a little triangle oh hi hi ann oh. <laughs> um is further down the bottom of the head don't take too much off the, the top. top and balance it in with the crest at mm -hmm. the back Mm -hmm. which then job. will lead into the so, whole body yeah. <laughs> and maybe um in a few weeks we could do a full bichon trim. yeah i think so i'll be struggling to get that done in an hour i know yeah. people are going to have to join us for long <laughs> people are going to have to join us for longer than an hour yeah 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 so um yeah definitely we've had some awesome um feedback and what mm -hmm. people want and we're trying to get a pom yeah to do a nice scissor um groom on yeah and once we get so we can go into some larger dogs so border collies i think yeah. they've had a couple of requests for border collie yeah. feet and yeah. how to you know de shed yeah. there um and nicolette's going to help us out with a pom so amazing, amazing. And a oh how good breeds. so that'll be good i love scissoring spit yeah <laughs> it's so fun their little booty. <laughs> yeah. So if you guys had any more questions about our little Bichon, hell yeah, full Bichon trim. Yeah. Okay. So it's coming. <laughs> um, I'll um, like yeah. definitely ask questions on this feed and we will definitely get, get back, back to you. you. Um, Dash is all tuckered out now. He still looks like he's got a round head, even Classic though it's flat on. <laughs> okay, so there's no more questions. So um, until next time. Mm, we'll see. Well, I'll see you then. Yeah. Mel will join us on the chat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but thank you so much for joining us. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel because that will give you updates every week to when we're going live. So it is Monday night at 7, 7 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, so mm -hmm. Melbourne time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and thank you so much for joining us and thank you so much um, for the lovely Dash. I oh, know. Thanks, Dash. Thank you. It's like, I okay, really we're ready for bed it. now. Yeah. I just found it. This will all be, as she's yes. just saying, you can rewatch re it. it. You can rewatch it on our YouTube channel as well as our Facebook, Facebook page. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Beautiful. Perfect. All right. Thanks, thanks guys. Thanks, guys. Bye. See you.